Uh, Assalamu alaikum everybody. Uh, welcome to our second lab, which is about W link list. Uh, hopefully, my explanation this time will be much shorter than lab one because we have explained most of the things. Uh, probably, all I have to do this time is to explain the tasks that you need to do. So the objective is to learn how to implement doubly linked lists and also how to use doubly linked uh, link lists. Uh, we will also learn how to, uh, as I explained in the lecture, practice some of the methods of array list and link list. Actually, since the methods are similar, I will probably just try to explain one of them just to remind you how to use the, the methods of the Java's array list and the Java's link list. Okay, this uh, class is, of course, as we emphasize in the lecture, they are in the java.util package. So before you use them, you have to import that particular package. Uh, maybe probably that's what we should start first. Uh, let us uh, take one of these classes uh, since this is the last topic that we did in the class, while it is still fresh in our mind, let us go over the methods of array list, see how they work in a real program, uh, so that we learn how to use those. Before we come back to our own DLL class and its implementation. So as usual, I expect that you have already downloaded uh, the lab 2 document, which is a zip file. You should have unzip it in a folder. And you will see, as we saw in lab 1, a document called lab2.doc and a folder. This folder is actually NetBeans project. So you have to open it from NetBeans. But the document, I have already opened it here. This is the one I'm going through. Uh, I have also already opened the Lab 2 project. Uh, if you see the project, it has a number of files. It has the DLL class, of course, the item class, the test integer DLL, and test item DLL. These are very similar to uh, the classes we saw in the lab one uh, project last time. Now, in addition to these classes, we also have test array list and test link list. I will concentrate on just maybe test array list just to show you how to use those methods of the uh, array list class. Uh, so we're going to start with that. Uh, okay, so this is the class. As I said, you have to import java.util.star or java.util.test array list in order to access this uh, class. And this is just to test some of the methods. So the first thing I do here, I create an array list of integer. And we add four. Okay, remember, add by default will add at the end of the list. Well, this is the first uh, element being added. So it will just be the first one. And of course, the last one. If you say add five, we expect that five will be added at the end of the list. So it's going to be after four. Okay. Now, if you say add six, in position two. Uh, this is position zero. This is position one. So actually six will also be added just after five as if we have just called add six. Okay, so six will be here. But now if we say add nine at position zero, Basically, we're saying add 9 at the beginning of the list. So, 9 will be the first element in the list. 
okay at this point if we print the list we should see these values and actually that's exactly what i want us to do so i'm going to comment the rest of the code from here till the end so that we can see just the output of this four additions that we have done here by printing the list uh, we are calling automatically is two string methods so actually it's going to print something like this okay so let's run this file uh, as i explained before you need to uh, just right click the file that you wish to run because there are many main classes in this project so just right click and say run file and you can see as expected these are the values printed nicely the two string of the arrays uh, class actually add even commas for you uh, after each uh, to separate the elements so this is very nice it also added the uh, the brackets at the beginning and at the end okay so this is the content of the list at the moment and it shows you how to use the add uh, the simple one with, the, with the, just the argument to add and the second version that takes the index now let's go back to the program uh, this is uh, add again but this time we are adding 7 at index 2 so now it will be interesting not like this uh, add 6 at 2 because we, are, we already have something in position 2 so if you say add 7 at 2 actually the rest of the element are going to be shifted 7 is going to be in position 2 now this is position 0 position 1 position 2 so actually 7 is going to be here just before 5 okay and then 5 and 6 will follow this is the effect of this statement uh, to test it we can uh, put our comment to start right here and then we will see where 7 is going to be added so run file uh, yeah as expected you can see 7 has been inserted at position 2 so this is the effect of that statement uh, moving on let us check the contains method contains as I said simply returns true or false so obviously our list does contain 6 at the moment so if we say if list dot contains 6 it should say item 6 found okay it shouldn't say item 6 not found because actually it will be found but if you say if list contains 10 uh, it should say item 10 not found okay uh, yeah so let's bring the uh, the comment until this line and you will see what I mean so if you run this uh, file yeah so you see item 6 found but item 10 not found so this is the purpose of the contains method it just gives you true or false right uh, moving on uh, this is using the get method okay so get will return the element at the given index okay so if you run this code you can see the output the, we are saying get the element at index 2 so the counting is from 0 okay counting is from 0 so this is number 0 number 1 and number 2 so the output is correct it's uh, supposed to print 7 okay uh, let's let's go to the uh, remove method here remove 4 okay now if you recall from the list of methods there are actually two remove methods 
one of them expecting an object and one of them expecting an index the issue here is what if your object is also an integer like now our array list contains integer values so if i say remove four for example am i saying remove object four so that it is supposed to remove uh, this four this is the object four or am i saying remove the element at index four which in this case is six because this is zero one two three four yeah this is the issue i wanted to clarify most times it will not be an issue because your data may not be integer values but what if the list contains integer values in this case the index and the object happen to be the same type both are integers so which of the two methods will execute okay so actually what will execute is the index one okay it will remove the element at index 4. Uh, to see that, let us run the code until this point, and you will see what, what will happen. So if you run the code again, uh, run file, let's run it from here. You will see that it will actually remove the last element. Yeah, the 6, you see, has disappeared after calling that removed. The element number four in terms of index, this is zero, one, two, three. So number four has been deleted. The question is, what if what I really want to remove is object four? Is there a way to do it? Actually, there is a way to do it. In that case, you cannot just say four. You have to create an object. You have to wrap it into an object. So here, for example, suppose instead of saying remove four, I say remove new integer four. Okay, remove new integer four. So this time, what I am passing is not a primitive value four. Rather, what I am passing actually is an object. So in that case, this is the method that will execute, the one that remove an object. Okay, let's test it and see. If you say run file, you see that now 4 is gone. Okay, 6 is still there. Yeah, so this is the point I just wanted to explain. Uh, the last thing in our example there is the... Uh, Um, is the size okay uh, the idea is suppose we want to remove the last element as I emphasize in uh, in the class array list doesn't have remove last or remove first just like it doesn't have uh, add first and add last link list has those but array list doesn't have. So suppose you want to remove the last element. Okay, you want to remove the last element. Let's return this back to a four. Actually, let's comment it because we want to see if it will remove the last element. Suppose we comment the removal. Okay, now if you need to remove the last element in array list, since there is no remove last, your only option is to give the index. And how do we get the index of the last element? Is by calling size then minus one. Because size will give you how many elements. For example, here we have one, two, three, four, five elements. But actually, index of the last element is four. Because the indexing starts from zero. Zero, one, two, three, four. Yeah, so this is how we can go around the problem of not having the remove last. We can say remove the one at the last index. Okay, so if we do that, you will see that uh, six is going to be deleted. Okay, and finally clear. 
will empty the list so if you print the list after calling clear it's gonna print empty okay let's run the program for the last time and you will see this uh, effects okay so you can see uh, the in removing the last one has succeeded because six is the last element it has been deleted and then after clear now the list is empty so this is just the idea you can try the other method that I didn't uh, discuss you can also go through the other class test array test link list to allow you to test the method of the link list the Java's link list class itself uh, okay so this is the end of discussion about the link list and array list in the Java library let us now come back to our real lab <coughs> which is about the W link list we are implementing okay so like we saw in singly link list the DLL class is provided to you as an example it has within it the DLL node so nothing to say there is exactly as we discussed for singly link list if you go through the class you will see that at the end we have the node class exactly as discussed and it has all the other methods like uh, find print uh, generic general delete uh, delete from tail delete from head add to tail add to head get first clear is empty uh, and so on those are the methods okay so nothing here we have not explained in the lecture if you have any doubt please refer back to the lecture uh, you can also listen to the the video recording of the lecture okay uh, now provided to you also is the test integer DLL uh, so again like we did in the lab 01 there is nothing more to explain in this class it is just trying to test the method of the DLL class so if you look at it test integer DLL the only difference between this class and the test integer SLL is that we are now creating an object of dll okay so dll of integer list equal to new dll of integer all other things are the same the same menu the same reading of the option and the same call to add to head add to tell nothing is different except that we are using a doubly linked list instead of singly linked list so really there is nothing here for me to explain whether to explain the code or even to run it is the same okay so uh, you can test it yourself to see how it works similarly test item dll is nothing new it's exactly what we discussed with test uh, item sll and you have the item class exactly as before and we are now trying to test whether our DLL can handle elements of type item so the only difference from what we saw in the last lab is that this is now a DLL of item rather than SLL of item everything else is the same it is just trying to test your double link list but this time with the item objects okay so those are the examples uh, we have already discussed the test array list and I ask you to test the to link list yourself they are basically the same uh, except difference in few of the methods so I can therefore go directly to the tasks to explain what you are supposed to do now the first task actually the first two tasks are the same again like singly the only thing is you are doing it with, with doubly so it says uh, copy test integer DLL and refactor it as test double DLL okay so all you have to do is take test integer DLL 
copy it okay and then paste it within the same package but you're gonna refactor it to be test double dll because we want to we want it to, to manage double values instead of integer values so this is exactly what you did last time with singly linked list okay so repeat the same job with the dll class uh similarly task two do the same thing you did with respect to test student dll uh, like you did last week now here i need to show you something that we're going to be using the student class in many labs so each time you just need to copy it from the previous lab to the current lab how do you do that exactly the same as you copy a class within the same package the only difference is now we are copying it from the other package i mean the other project rather this is actually the reason why i open lab one project because i have a student class there this is just the aim is to show you how to copy a class from one project to another project because we're going to need the student class in this second project so as i said there is no difference in copying a class and refactoring it in the same project than copying it to another project just you have to right click and say copy then come to the pack to the other uh, project right click and hover over the pest <coughs> the pest value it will allow you to refactor this time we don't even want to change the name the name should remain the same so just say refactor and you see that the student class has been added to this project so maybe at this point i can close the other project i can say right click close project okay close this particular project so now one project has been closed the purpose of opening it was just to show you how to copy some files from there to here maybe we should have copied the test student as well because you also just need to make minor modification from what you did in the last lab to this one but i think the idea is clear so uh what are you supposed to do according to the document so copy the student class from lab one project to lab two project also copy test student sll from lab one project to lab two project but this time you need to refactor it and make it to be test student dll rather than sll so actually you need to copy two files from that project what are you going to do simply update uh the test student dll to use dll instead of sll so we want our dll to manage student objects exactly like you did last week with sll so this task one and two really are nothing new it's the same like you did last week the only thing is they are being done on a doubly linked list rather than singly linked list so the only new task therefore is task three so task three is the one you are asked to implement more methods to the doubly linked list class okay again some of the methods are very similar uh, from last week so you can just copy them from sll many of them without any change for example uh, length and two string are exactly the same if you have them in ssl just copy them to dll the only thing you have to change maybe in your temporary variable uh, you shouldn't be using sll node you should be using dll node okay but otherwise the, the logic is the same okay so let's go through the method one by one you're gonna do get last i gave you as an example get first so you can do get last okay uh, you already did both get last and get first from last week but this time if you check the dll i actually give you get first okay all you have to do is make sure the list is not empty 
if if it is not empty return head.info otherwise return null so i'm now asking you to also do get last so this is very easy length we are counting how many nodes so you just need to traverse the list from head using a counter variable each time you reach a new node you update the count at the end you return so as i said nothing different uh, compared to what we did last week this is new however print reverse the good news is that w link list has two references to the next node and to the previous node so we have already been printing our elements in forward manner starting from head then the next and the next and next but with doubly link list we can also do the reverse printing yeah, and it's starting from tail keep printing coming back coming back until you reach the first node so this is what this method is supposed to do is similar to print all but instead of printing forward we want it to print backward so you may just copy your print all and update it accordingly okay basically instead of starting from head you're gonna start from tail and instead of moving to the next you're gonna move to the previous that is basically the idea uh, now we saw that the java's link list and array list they have a method called get which if you give it an index it will return to you the element at that index so we're asking you to do the same okay uh, it says write this method that returns the element at the given index or null if the index is not valid okay now the first thing to note is that not all indexes are valid for example if you have an array containing 10 elements then the valid indexes are from 0 to 9 okay and i expect you to check that first before you do anything make sure the index you receive as argument is valid and i have given you here the valid values for indexes in this method are from 0 until length minus 1 you already have done the length method so you can call to know how many elements are there just subtract one okay so you need to check that the, i mean the index is within this range so index should be not negative and if it is negative or if it is greater than this no need to continue just return null okay otherwise you need to loop uh, until you reach the index and return to us the element corresponding to your attempt okay i leave you to think about how to do this but it requires a traversal starting from head until index but each time you need to also be moving the temp because by the time you reach index you should have a temp that is pointing to the node so that you can just return temp.info okay this is the get method uh, then we have insert at method this is very important uh, so far we have uh, insert uh, rather add to head and add to tell but we don't have a method to add a new element at the in the middle at a given index okay so this is what you are supposed to do add an element at a given index so this element we receive from the user we want to add it at this index okay so like you did here the first thing to do is check that the index is valid but here there is a slight difference between the possible valid values for index in the insert art compared to get here the valid values is from 0 until length minus 1 but here actually we can it is it is fine to say add at length let me explain why uh, let's stick to the same example suppose you have 10 elements 
in the list. Then it means the valid index are actually from 0 to 9. So what happens if the user say insert at 10? Essentially what he is saying is add to tell. Okay, so you can add another value at position 10 so that there are now 11 elements from 0 until 10. Okay, so in the case of adding, index that corresponds to length is actually valid. But in the case of get, index that corresponds to length is not valid. It's outside the possible uh, valid values. You have to stop at minus 1. Okay, so we need you basically to do similar thing. You have to start a traversal from uh, assuming you have checked that the index is valid. Just you need to loop from zero until you reach index. Each time you will be moving your temp. So temp initially will be head. So as you increment your i, you should also move temp to the next. Increment i by one move temp to the next. Until i equal to index, you will stop the loop and turn the temp.info. Sorry, and insert the, the new element at temp.info. Okay, so I leave you to think about how to do the insertion. Basically, since we are adding, you have to create a new node at that point, and you have to adjust the pointers accordingly. So you can take a pencil and paper, and see how best to do this. Uh, I'm sure you'll be able to do it given the examples already uh, we have seen. The last method is to array. Okay, we saw that Java's uh, link list and array list, they have this method. Basically, we want to convert uh, your link list to an array, array of objects. Okay, so basically all you have to do is create an array of objects of size the same as the length of the list. Okay, the same as the number of elements in the list. Uh, and then you traverse the list like you would do in print all. Each time adding tem.info to this array that you just created and then increment your index by one. So by the time you finish going through the list, your array will be full of elements, just return it. Okay, so these are the methods. Basically get, uh, maybe reverse, get, insert add, and to array. And these are the four methods that will actually be graded, uh, 0.5 for each one of them. Okay. Once you do that, uh, you need to test this method. So you have to add more options to your test student DLL to test these methods. Okay, that is the task for this week. Uh, I hope you'll be able to finish it by the time the, the period of the lab uh, ends so that you can submit through Blackboard. Thank you very much.